My Bible reading this morning comes from the Gospel writer Matthew, Matthew chapter 14, and I will be reading to you from verse 22. Now we all know, this is just to give you, put it in context, that Jesus had just fed the 5,000 men. That's besides women and, and children. So it was more than 5,000 people that he fed. And then, immediately, listen carefully to that, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, that was about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus said immediately, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out, down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, there again, immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the mountain, the wind died down. Into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. We thank God for his word to us today and pray that he will bless the word, his word to our, to our hearts today. Amen. While I was preparing my message, I was wondering if anyone here today have ever been on a boat and sailed across a lake or a river or wherever. Anybody? Oh, you are such brave people. <laughs> That's one place you will not get me. I will never get into a boat. Why? Because when you look out and you want to step out that boat, there's water. Air. No ways. <laughs> I want to feel something under my, beneath my feet. Never ever will you get me there. You know, that thought burdens me already. I'm burdened for these people who go on boats and go across the road. It burdens me already. My friends, we notice that after Jesus fed the 5,000 uh, people, he immediately got his disciples into a boat and he set them off. Why did Jesus do that? 
Yes. Jesus was burdened. Did you know that? Jesus was burdened. And before he dismissed the crowd, he got them away. Jesus didn't want them to be burdened. Because you see, there was a move. There was a move to make Jesus king. Jesus had to go and sit on an earthly throne. And Jesus didn't want that. That was the last thing that Jesus wanted. That power he had rejected when he was tempted in the wilderness by the evil one. Jesus knew he was not sitting on an earthly crown. He was going to the cross. Can you see how committed Jesus was? My friends, Jesus has done that for you and me. He has made that decision for you and me. But now Jesus was burdened because of the hostility of the Orthodox people. Because he knew that there were going to be problems. I mean, we've all gone through a lot of problems, haven't we? There's all been hijacks, there's all been um, people marching in the street and shouting, killing and carrying on. He knew that was going to be part of it. Because his answer to them will remain, I'm not sitting on that earthly throne. And that is why Jesus was burdened. But I want you to notice the first thing that Jesus did. He went onto the mountain to pray. He went onto the mountain to pray. My friends, I want to say to you that we today also going through those struggles. Don't we? We today don't walk on water. No, no, no. But we go through tough situations. All of us. All of us have been there. When the ways of illness begins to fall in our boats, like in the case of the disciples, When Jesus went up the mountain to pray, he was still watching over his disciples. Isn't that awesome? And then he saw when the wind started coming up that they would slow down. The disciples were happy to be in that boat, especially Peter because he lived in a boat. But he saw the having problems. The wind was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And it was at that moment, three o'clock in the morning, the waves were falling into their boat. He noticed that. And what did Jesus do? He came. He came. Now I want you to just picture that. Go and sit in that boat for a few seconds. The waves are falling into your boat. And when they looked up, you see something that looks like a ghost. Can you imagine the fears and the anxieties, the insecurity that those disciples felt. And you see, my friends, that is what we feel at times. 
when we go through tough times in our lives, when the waves of illness or the waves of, of grief, the waves of in unemployment, if all those waves fall into our boat, we do become anxious. We stressed out in the world today. Everybody is stressed out because we don't always know what we can expect. When we listen to the news, we hear about people killing each other as if it's a way of life. Isn't that true? When we hear about corruption and people are struggling financially, People are living in poverty. There are people who do not know where their meal, next meal comes from. The unemployment rate is, down, is up. There is no work for people. And then the load sharing. We don't know what to expect. Doesn't that make you feel insecure? Doesn't that burden you? Of course it does. And then what about that earthquake two to three weeks ago? What about that earthquake? I want to tell you, I get my perm out <laughs> of I was lying in bed and I woke up with this and my whole flat there in Boxburg was doing this, I promise you. I was sitting, I was lying there watching my, my dressing table. It was going like this, my friends. And I thought, this is time, it's time. This is it. I get my perm uitgeskrik. You see, people say it's during times like these that we need to have faith. Isn't that true? Yes. yes. We need to have faith. But how? How do you get out of your boat? How do you have the faith to cope with things when they're on your doorstep? How do we do this? How do we cope when things are out of control? Your control, my control. I always tell my Bible study, go and sit with Jesus and tell him what you feel. Tell him. Jesus knows what you fear. You can't tell Jesus anything that he doesn't know. He knows. Tell Jesus what you feel. If you are angry, tell him. If you're feeling fearful, insecure, tell him. Tell Jesus exactly what you feel. And after you have told him, listen to what he's saying to you. Listen. My friend, I cannot stress it more. Listen is very, listening to Jesus is very important. Hear what he's saying to you. He may not say it immediately. Perhaps we have to wait. But listen to what Jesus is saying. When Jesus felt burdened, he went up the mountain to listen to his heavenly Father. Listening. You see, friends, we 
We all struggle through life right now. We all feel burdened. I don't, I don't think there's anybody here this morning who may not feel burdened. Something is burdening you. And if that be the case, if you feel burdened this morning, I want to extend an invitation to you. Come and sit with Jesus and tell him. Tell him and then listen. Let us never forget that Jesus has a plan for your life. And my friends, it is in times like these that Jesus is growing your faith. It is in times like these that he is shaping our character, your character, my character, to become like him. To become like him, to take on the mind of Jesus. For I know the plans I have for you, says Jesus through the prophet uh, Jeremiah. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you. Did you hear that? There are plans to prosper you. You see, it is when we go and sit with Jesus that the promises that Jesus made become alive in us. What are those promises? Taryn told us last week, I will be with you. I am with you. I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. Go and sit with Jesus and feel his presence. And then Jesus said, come to me, those who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. I won't give it to you only if you are good. I'll give it to you whether you failed me or whether you haven't failed me. I will give you rest. Go and sit with Jesus and allow that, the promises of Jesus, to rekindle that flame of hope in you and in me. My friends, Jesus comes to us. I want you to notice that Jesus was on that mountain to pray, but he was still looking over, watching over the disciples. And when he realized that they had a problem, he came. You see, Jesus comes when we are in need. But the problem with those disciples, they didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him when he came. He's always watching over us today, in, especially in an hour of need. Jesus will come to save. Jesus comes to encourage us. Jesus comes to help us. But the problem is, we allow our burdens, our fears, our anxieties, our insecurities, our uncertainties to paralyze us and we stay in the boat and we fail to recognize Christ when he comes. Isn't that true? Very, very true. My friends, I want to invite you this morning to not allow those insecurities to keep you in the boat. Don't allow that. Call on Jesus. Call on him. 
and he will come. He's there already. What happens when you come home at night time and sit in front of the TV now, you're going to watch your, your favorite program and your DSTV don't work? What happens? Very frustrated. You grab the phone, your cell phone, and call the call center to fix it. You see, Jesus is like our call center. Our call center. When the waves of exhaustion and worry fall into your boat, call on Jesus. Nurture the hope of the promises that you have in him. Nurture it and call on Jesus to come. If you do, the promises of Christ becomes alive in you. That's when it becomes alive in you. And my friends, that is how we keep our faith. That is how we keep our faith. Peter called on Jesus. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. And what did Jesus do? He says, Peter, come. And he stepped out of that boat and he walked on water. He walked on water. You see, when we are tormented by the waves that fall into our boats, it could be a disappointment, it could be discouragement, waves of doubt. If they fall into your boat, don't allow it to paralyze you. Because if we do, we're going to become negative. Negativity will see, will, will set in. And we don't look at the situation from God's perspective. I'm looking at it from my perspective, what I can do to help myself. You see, we give in to our emotions, don't we? When I become negative, I give in to my emotions. Why do I give in to my emotions? Because I'm, not lis I'm listening to my emotions. I'm not listening to Jesus. And then we see a ghost. And because we're not listening to Jesus, we don't expect him to come. But he does. The disciples didn't expect Jesus then. But he came. He came. Jesus always comes to us to pick us up, to reveal his divine presence. He reveals his divine presence to us. But my friends, unless we look through the eyes of faith, we're not going to recognize him. We're going to miss Jesus. So don't, don't stay in the boat. Jesus is with you. Jesus is with me. All we have to do is to come. We cannot for the rest of our lives sit in a boat. We cannot do that. Peter got out of the boat and what happened? As I said, he walked on water. My friends, he had an awesome experience with Jesus. It was Jesus and Peter alone on that water. But then, Peter saw the wind. And he realized that he was on water, 
when there was a storm, in the middle of a storm, and there was no boat beneath him. And that is why he began to sink. You see, friends, his focus shifted from his saviour to the wind. Can you see that? How often do our focus shift from our saviour to our circumstances? How often does that happen? Setbacks, opposition, when the unexpected things happen, we see the wind. Like Peter, we see the wind and we begin to sink because we shift our focus and we focus on those difficult waves of circumstances instead of facing on our Saviour. Can I suggest to you that everything today is risky, isn't it? Life in the boat is not going to be safer than life out of the boat. You can stay home. You can be asleep in your bed and you can still fall out of your bed and break your leg. It happens. Those things happen. Jesus is the only one who keeps us safe. And Jesus is faithful. He is the only one who saves us from our fears, insecurities, uncertainties, worry, exhaustion, you name it. Jesus is the only one who can save us from that. And he is the only one who can walk you through stormy waters. Focus on him, not on your emotions, not on your circumstances. Focus on him. I want to close by saying that he, God's power and his victory is always complete. God's power and his victory is always complete. Because Jesus is the one who won the victory through his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. War and destruction are inevitable. It's happening in our world today. But my friends, so is God's final victory. It's inevitable. It is there for us. So be still and know that he is God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word to us today. During very difficult times, Lord, that we go closer to you because you draw us to come. You draw us through your word. You draw us through, your, through prayer. And as we walk through life and the waves begin to fall into our boats, Oh, Jesus, it is only you who can come and help us and save us. But we come to you today, Father God, and we confess that we shift our focus. And instead of looking at you, Jesus, the one who died for us, the one who is faithful to us, we look at our circumstances. We shift our focus. 
And Father, as we come to kneel at your table today, feed us, Lord Jesus. Feed us with a deep sense of security, a deep sense of your love, a deep sense of your victory that you have won for us. Save us, O oh God, and help us to focus on you and not on our circumstances. And so into your care we commit ourselves in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.